Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salamu ala rasulillah. So, I wanted to share some thoughts with you about the idea of shukr. Uh, preparing for my khutbah tomorrow at Mishra al-Faruq, I plan to write the khutbah on shukr, gratitude. And having written it all out, there's still a question that remains, and that is, is shukr a emotional state? Is it an emotion, or is it a state of mind? And if so, what emotions lead to shukr? And what emotions grow out of shukr? And in exploring this topic, <clears throat> I started to analyze my own life and start thinking to myself, you know, how how is this topic going to make a difference for me, first and foremost? And how are people going to walk away with something that is um, that's tangible, something that they can, is actionable? A lot of you gave me great feedback over Twitter and Facebook the other day when I asked you, how do you want to feel when you walk out of a khutbah? And I really appreciate all of that, that great feedback, and I'm trying to incorporate that. And when I think about delivering a khutbah, I usually say to myself, you know, my, my, my standard of a good khutbah is a khutbah that my grandmother or my mother can listen to and walk away with something with. They can walk away with, with, with a good feeling and with a basic understanding of the topic. Back to the idea of of shukr and the emotions that precede shukr and the emotions that that uh, come after shukr. You know, I started thinking to myself about my own life, my own difficulties. You know, and it's very easy when you experience difficulties uh, and you start to analyze those difficulties to get away from a mindset of shukr. And to kind of toss yourself into a mindset of self-pity, of loneliness, of melancholy. And you simply uh, incapacitate yourself, make yourself unable to function. Whereas if you... If you concentrate on those things that are actually good, then you can get past those things that are bad. And I think one of the problems is, is that we don't realize that many of the good things that happen in our life are actually constants. And because they're so constant in our life, we don't realize how great, how, how much gratitude we should actually have for them. We don't recognize them as blessings. And so, we come away, uh, you know, simply focusing on the calamity, the catastrophe, the melancholy, the negativity, and not saying to ourselves, you know what, um, that is an anomaly. That that bad thing, that negativity, that rejection, that uh, you know um, lack of participate, whatever it may be, that thing is an anomaly in the long cycle of my life and of, of the things that are good in my life. So when I, I personally was analyzing this, I said to myself, you know what, what is the, let, let me not ask what the emotion is that will bring about, uh, what will bring about sugar, but let me ask what the emotion is that's blinding me from sugar. What's the emotion that's stopping me from being, from showing gratitude for the things that I have that are constants in my life? And I noticed that it was this anxiety of focusing too much on the negative, of thinking that things can't be changed. And it really is the difference between, you know, I had one of my, one of my teachers, um, you know, Qadi uh, Afzal al-Din, he was... He was a man of a few words, but a lot of, or he is a man of few words, but a lot of wisdom. And, uh, you know, he used to say to me, he said, you know, when people come to you and they look at you like this, 
and you just look like this. That's all it takes. When they look like this, you look like that. And that's all you have to do. Simply changing your perspective, changing what your focus is on, um, can bring about a, a huge difference in your life. And so there's a, a, I had forgotten that I was doing this, and I remember talking to, uh, having coffee with uh, two friends of mine at their home. We were talking about their children and the, the difficulties they were, they were finding in their studies, and, 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 and you know, they asked me, you know, how do you get over anxiety? How do you get past, you know, the, the, the kind of debilitating thoughts that you have that stop you from focusing on what you need to focus on? <clears throat> and this is something that I myself do. Uh, it's not a sunnah. It's not anything that I took from a from a teacher. It's something that I found anecdotally um, helps me get through or get past roadblocks, uh, emotional roadblocks, especially anxiety. And that is, <clears throat> excuse me. And that is, I will um, close my eyes and take uh, a deep breath and will think about pleasurable memories from throughout my life. So I'll think about, for example, playing on the snowbanks in Detroit as a child or going to the beach for the first time in my life in South Carolina as a child. Think about uh, late nights in Medina sitting on Mount Uhud. And I'll think about uh, uh, hugging one of my children I'll think about things like that that bring about a positive, warm feeling that I can identify with. Then I say five positive things about myself to myself. So I'll say, for example, another you know deep breath, eyes closed, I'll say, I am intelligent, I am accomplished, I am worthy. And you're saying to yourself, but Am I really those things? It doesn't matter. Just tell it to yourself because if you, the more you tell it to yourself, the more you will affirm your inner success, your inner worth, and everything else. And that's a, that's another topic we can talk about self affirmation at another time. But five self affirmation. So five, uh, um, five mem you know positive memories, five positive self affirmations. And then I say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, wa Allahu Akbar, five times. And I usually find that after that, um, Alhamdulillah, whatever anxiety or negativity or kind of you know um, melancholic demeanor that I was developing uh, really dissipates and goes away. And as I said, it's completely anecdotal. It's what I do for myself. You find what's going to work for you, but this is what I found that works for myself. Combination of Positive affirmation, positive memory, and, 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 and positive positivity and vicar. And when I did that today, as I, I was having that feeling, I did that today, a hadith came to mind that I had not thought of for years, and I, I, I wanted to share it with you all because I think that it, it goes back to the idea of what's constant, being something that's an uh, an undiscovered source of gratitude. Uh, it's narrated by Ubaidullah al-Khatmi, radiyallahu anhu, um, in the uh, in the Adab al-Mufrad of Imam al-Bukhari. Imam al-Bukhari wrote many books. From them, Sahih, his Sahih al-Jami' al-Muslim al-Sahih. Another book that he wrote about Adab was called Adab al-Mufrad. He has uh, several other books, Khalq uh, Af'al al-Ibad and Aqidah and others. Anyways, in this book, Al-Adab al-Mufrad, which the ahadith in this book are of a level that are prop, that are probably better than those in the Sunan, but not to the level of his Sahih. It's also narrated by Tirmidhi in his Sunan. And he said about it, uh, that I believe he said it was Hassan al-Gharib. That the Prophet والسلام, said, Man asbaha aminan fi sarabihi Mu'afan fi jismihi Indahu qutu yawmihi Faka'anna ma hizat lahu dunya That the Prophet والسلام, said Whoever awakes Whoever finds himself in the morning 
you know, whoever starts the day, safe in his domicile, safe in his situation. Mu'afan fi jasadihi, of good health in his body, free from any difficulties, faults. عنده قوت يومه he has sustenance for that day, for his day. Then it's as if the entire dunya, the entire world, has been gathered up for him. These three things are things that are constants that we don't think about enough. You know, take for example what's going on in Sudan right now. Complete media blackout. We really have no what's no no idea what's happening with our brothers and sisters in Sudan. May Allah subhanahu wa taala save those who have been oppressed and wronged and and, and, and cease any uh, bloodshed and, 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 and give victory to those who are seeking justice. I mean, but if we, if we think to ourselves, you know, it's very easy to get uh, in, to, into ourselves and, the, and the, the tragedy of our own situation, when in reality, that one constant of simply having, you know, a safe domicile, you know, we have a safe home to live in. We have safe neighborhoods to live in. We have safe townships and cities to live in. That is huge. And because it's so normal, we forget to make shukr for it. Then he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Mu'afan fi jasadihi. Free of difficulty, free of disease, free, free of harm in, in, their, in their... They have afiyah. They, they, they've been... Freed of, of peril and difficulty in their in their body, you know how many of us, you know we we get a slight cold and it's as if the entire world has ended. We have people out there that you know. I was thinking of a friend today, whose father had gone through cancer treatment, uh, or is going through cancer treatment. Um, you know, so much of us don't have that level of difficulty, and because our health is such a constant we forget to make sugar for it in fact if you live in the united states you know these two things uh having safe domicile and having relatively good health you probably are doing better than 99 percent of all other people in the world and then thirdly the prophet said he has food for the day, as staples for the day. You know, maybe you search your house and you're upset because you don't have, you know, something sweet or salty to snack on. But you have food security. You actually have running water in your home. You have, you have fresh fruits and vegetables. You have frozen fruits and vegetables. You have, you know, you have, uh, you have, you have meat. Some people don't eat meat out of choice, but they don't eat meat hardly ever. And so, um, if you have these three things, you have three constants in your life that should be a, an immense cause of shukr. And so, how do we lose sight of that shukr? We allow negative emotions to cloud it out. <coughs> but if we focus on the constants, constants, instead of the anomalies, instead of something that pops up on the screen, but we focus on the constants, we can have more shukr, we can, be, we can have more gratitude, and when we have more gratitude, then we have more blessings. And if you were to show gratitude, then I will surely increase you. Well, that's it. Jazakallah khairan. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you next time. Assalamu alaikum.